because the network provider makes assumptions about how people will use their service, uh, and it's on, based on those assumptions that allows them to what's called multiplex their provision. So instead of having to give every individual the 100 megabits a second that you think you've bought, they actually only have some proportion of that, and they just assume that you're actually not going to use it. You're not, in fact, going to be using it 100% of the time at full, full rate. And so what they can then do is they can kind of overlay so that when you're quiet, somebody else is getting that bandwidth. When they're quiet, you're getting that bandwidth. If you've got the total capacity and you've got lots and lots of subscri subscribers coming in to this, so there's lots and lots of houses, individuals, at the end of this. If we were all using this at full rate all the time, so we were all going, you know, then it just wouldn't fit, right? Because you, you're only going to have, relatively speaking, a small amount out of here. So let's put some numbers on this. So let's say here you've got one gigabit a second, sort of picking things out of thin air, and each of these is 100 megabits a second, and there are 50 subscribers on this. If everybody was going at full rate all the time, you'd have five gigabits coming in here and only one gigabit coming out, and that won't fit. People are going to get loss, they're going to get congestion, it'll increase the delays, because essentially all the packets are going to end up queuing up. And eventually, because this is a finite size queue, you can't have an infinite memory in this, some of the packets are going to end up getting dropped. So you'll get loss. Because this queue is going to be full, you'll have lots of extra delay, because the packets are going to come in at the back and they're going to have to wait till they get to the front to go through. So when you're overloaded like that, this is what causes loss, it causes delay, and it makes the user experience suck because it means that when you're trying to get data from a site or you're trying to transmit requests to a site, it takes a long time for anything to happen because you have to retransmit the lost data and you've got to kind of deal with all this. However, in practice, it's unlikely that all of the users are going to be using it at 100% of the rate 100% of the time. So, so long as you've got, you know, some users can be busy and then some users are sort of going to be quiet and maybe just use it a little bit and then some users will be bursty users like this it'll all kind of fit together on average and everybody will be okay. So this is called statistical multiplexing, that you're fitting things together like this. If you end up in a situation like here, for example, where everybody does happen to use it significantly all at the same time. So for instance, they're watching an online stream, live stream or something. Watching a live stream or commonly a lot, well certainly I experience this on, with my ISP that if I come home in the evening, sometime between about five o'clock and eight o'clock, things are often a bit slower. The network's not so good. And that's not because my level of access has changed is because everybody's using it at that time and so it's just busy homework watching films watching iPlayer whatever it might be yeah. um, and you so you've got these kind of queuing effects that happen where there's just lots of data trying to get through the pipe queues build up congestion builds up things slow down a bit you start seeing packet loss most of the time that doesn't happen and so most of the time the ISPs can get away with selling each of you 100 megabits a second even though they couldn't actually deal with it if everybody used that all the time so they're, they're playing a bit, well, a bit of a gambling game, but they're also uh, mitigating cost against that. So if you wanted guaranteed bandwidth like you're a business... Then you pay more you because pay you're more. paying for that guarantee. And in, indeed, there's a, I mean, it is kind of a gambling game explicitly in that there's a lot of maths that goes into this of studying these kind of traffic patterns and trying to work out what these traffic patterns are going to be and how things are going to behave and what kind of ratios you can get away with here and still provide decent service. And one of the things that makes it particularly difficult in the internet um, so this, this kind of process has been done on the phone network for decades, hundreds of years, probably, yeah, probably over 100 years now. Um, and the, the nice thing about phone calls is that they follow a certain pattern. So there are certain statistical distributions, probability distributions you can apply to that. So it's the Poisson distribution is a good way of modelling the arrivals rate of phone calls. So there's some random period of time and then you get a phone call coming in. And that random period of time follows a distribution. And that distribution is quite amenable to mathematical analysis and so you can do lots of quite detailed planning of how big you have to build things and what you've got to cope with there. One of the problems with the internet is that because of the way that the data is put into packets and then transmitted, essentially the distributions of those kind of arrival times of data of packets at a particular point in the network are much, much less amenable to analysis and it becomes very difficult to manipulate that and plan for what's going to happen because at any given moment thing, more things could happen than you expected kind of thing. And so it, it's much harder to do that kind of analysis. If everything's kind of random and independent, it's typically easier to deal with. Whereas if you've got lots of things happening at the same time because they kind of naturally all happen together, it means you can have quiet periods and then massive amount of stuff happen and then quiet period and massive amount of stuff happen instead of just having things kind of chugging along at random in the background. And so you get 
you get sort of lots of correlated arrivals. So because of the way that some of these underlying protocols work, for example, there's a tendency for there either to be nothing or a burst of packets, all one after the other. And that kind of bursty behavior means that you tend to get quiet periods and then very, very busy periods, rather than having some kind of background, you know, averagely busy kind of period. As a user, for us, it's, that's quite a bad thing. In the sense that because of that kind of effect, it's hard to work out for the ISP to work out how to big, big to build everything and how close to the bone they can cut this, essentially. Which means that it, you will, from time to time, experience slowdowns and things if you're not paying the extra money for the guarantee bandwidth. What's going to happen is you've got some data that starts out in your browser, so that's the request. And then that's going to get sent down through these libraries eventually into the operating system. And what's going to happen there is that this chunk, which is your original data, maybe is going to get encoded as a TCP segment. 